I'm posting this video for anyone who has lost important photographs, videos and other files when your hard drive or your camera's SD card has failed or you've accidentally deleted files before backing them up. If this has happened to you, then you're not alone. It's happened to me on a number of occasions and I'd like to share the lessons I've learned in what I hope will be an interesting account of what is and what isn't possible to recover using software and how to recover files that you might have initially thought were lost forever. I'll briefly describe the scenarios where I've needed to use recovery software, explain why I chose a software solution called EaseUs, Data Recovery Wizard, and demonstrate the software in action. By the way, EaseUs are not paying me to post this video. I purchased their software some time ago after testing a variety of other data recovery options. However, they kindly sent me an up-to-date version of the software for this video. Over the years, as a very active photographer and video producer, I've lost, or thought I'd lost, photos and videos and other documents in nearly all ways imaginable. My computer's hard drive has failed, partitions within the drive have failed, backup external disks have failed, and SD cards have failed. A lot of the lost files have been backed up, fortunately, but still, I've appeared to have lost, or I've accidentally deleted, some really important stuff for me and for clients. On four separate occasions, active SD cards have become corrupted in some way, where neither my computer nor my cameras will read the SD card anymore, so I can't access files on the card to save to other disks. This is the scenario, including accidentally deleted files, that I'm going to focus on in the recovery demonstrations, although the same approach is applicable to hard drives and external disk drives as well. I should add at this point that before trying data recovery software, you should check that the problem isn't being caused by the USB port, or a faulty SD card reader, or debris or physical problems with the SD card itself. Faulty SD card readers are something I've experienced a number of times since using digital cameras. In all the scenarios I've faced, the good news is that deleted data can often be recovered from the disks, unless the disks are completely unreadable or data has been written over by other data. As you probably know, if you want to completely delete files for security and privacy reasons, the best way to do this is not just to delete them or reformat the disk, but to write over them many times. I'll show you what happens if you reformat an SD card later. Now the first time an SD card of mine became unreadable, I went into a state of shock and panic. And when I recovered from that, I went online and search for links to the best rated data recovery software options. I tested a number of free to try disk recovery solutions, and to my enormous relief, I found that software was able to recover at least some of my lost or deleted files. The less good news is that in most cases, while you can see your recovered files on the screen, you have to pay to save those files or repair corrupted files, but that's fair enough. It's a price worth paying for important images and videos. The test showed that some of the software solutions were more successful and useful and easier to use than others, and I ended up buying a license to use EaseUs. As I demonstrate how EaseUs works in practice, I'll explain why I chose EaseUs specifically and highlight the key issues you'll face in recovering files. You can download a free trial version of EaseUs Data Recovery to test whether it's possible to read the SD card, and the first demo I'll show you is the most simple, straightforward scenario with a newly formatted disk and only a limited number of deleted files. I've loaded 16 JPEG photos onto the SD card across three different folders where I've named the lens I've used and another folder using the camera's own designated name. I convert raw files into JPEGs after processing, so there are no raw files to recover on this disk, but the software will recover raw files as well. This folder structure is very important for my work, as I tend to use the same SD card to store photos from a number of different old lenses. As soon as I connect the SD card to my PC, I rename each folder on the card with the name of the lens I've been using, before I forget which lens it is. At some later date, I cut and paste the folder onto a hard drive. I've also loaded a video into the path where my camera saves videos. Now I'll delete two of the photo folders and cut and paste the other two folders, transferring them to another drive. And I'll also delete the video. 
So let's see what ESUS can recover from this now completely empty disk. By the way, this is the same recovery process to use if your computer refuses to recognize your SD card, and it tells you you need to format the card, i.e. it looks like all the files have been lost. Here's the ESUS control panel, and there's a choice of disks you can choose to scan. I want to recover files from the SD card plugged into the USB drive E, so I click on that. The software starts to run through its recovery process. And while it's doing this, a quick look at the key parts of the control panel. The panel gives you access to the recovered data in two main groups. One group is the type of data. If you click on each data type, you can see what's been recovered. So, for example, you can look at all the JPEGs recovered. Or the videos recovered. The recovered video is under MP4. The other way to look at the data is by path, and here are the four subfolders under the DCIM folder that have all been recovered. This is critical for me, because not all data recovery software will give you the folder names. Some other software simply dump all the recovered data into one huge folder, and when this happens, I can't easily identify, or can't identify at all, which photo was taken by which lens. Here are the final results of the scan. All 16 photos have been recovered and are not corrupted, and they have their original file names. And the video has been recovered as well, and it runs properly. One of the very useful features of the software is that you can filter the data and then only save the data you want to another disk. There are various criteria for filtering the files, and I'll demonstrate these later. Another useful feature is that the software can identify the brand of cameras used to take these photos, covering a number of selected brands, and you can drill down under each brand to see the photos. To save the recovered data, you can click this button and choose where you want the data to be saved, preferably not on the disk you're recovering the data from. And here are the recovered photos and videos, all safely back in place and complete. This is a relief and a very impressive result to me when I've initially thought I'd lost my files. If you don't buy a copy of the software and use the trial version, then when you click the Recover button, then this is what you'll see on the screen. You'll be able to scan the disks and see the files recovered on screen, but you'll need to buy the software to save the files and also access other services listed here. Before demonstrating the next recovery scenario, I'd like to discuss what happens when you reformat SD cards, because this has a lot of relevance to some recovery situations. I'll format the SD card with the data loaded on before, and show you what happens in real time on the PC screen, so you can see there's no trickery involved. When you do a quick format, the system warns us that all the data on the disk will be erased. That noted, I go ahead with the quick format. It doesn't take long, and once the SD card has been formatted, there appears to be nothing on the card, no paths or subfolders, no data. Running the data recovery scan, and surprise, surprise, you can see that it pretty quickly starts to recover the so-called erased lost data. Indeed, the software has been able to recover the different data types, the photos and the video, but as you'll notice, it's also picked up duplicates, and I'll get back to that in a moment. In terms of the folder names under path, they're not so obviously listed, but they are there under directory 3 and the software has picked up the camera brands used. Talking about duplicates, take a look at one of the photos taken with a full-frame Sony camera. This one is of Chiswick House, and it's 22.83 megabytes in size. Now, if we go back to these recovered photos, not grouped under the camera brands, you can see the same Chiswick House photo. 
But this time, it's not the full-size image. It's much smaller, only a thumbnail size. And it's been assigned a different file name, not the original file name. I don't know technically why Recovery Data Software picks up these duplicates, but all the software options I've tried produce duplicates with different file names and sizes. These duplicates are easy to spot when there's a relatively small number of photos to recover, but as we'll see soon, it's more of a problem when there are thousands of images to recover. One important lesson here is if you really want to zap all the data on your SD card, you need to run a full format, which I've done now. These are the final control screens of the SD card after a full, not quick format, and the software has found no paths on the disk and no data in the different types of file, i.e. all the data has been totally erased. Personally, I'm a fan of quick reformats of my SD cards. I think it's good practice to reformat SD cards occasionally, but you do need to know that a quick format does not completely delete the data, and this has important implications for the next scenario I'm going to show you. As a matter of interest, I also tried quick formatting an SD card on my Sony a7 IV, and despite the warning message, it didn't completely erase the photographs or videos either. They were still recoverable. On the other hand, the camera's full format did completely erase the files. Now for a much more complicated scenario. This is where the disk you want to recover files from has loads and loads of files, covering thousands of photographs from over a year's photography or more, plus numerous short video clips and other documents. Even if you've been diligently regularly backing up your files and sometimes running a quick reformat of your SD cards, as we've seen, a quick reformat doesn't delete all the data, so it's still possible to recover data from over a long period of time, assuming it hasn't been corrupted or overwritten. I'm going to use a 64 gigabyte disk that has a lot of old deleted, erased or moved photos and videos and other data with no data visible on the disk. For this amount of data, the recovery scan takes longer. After 10% of the scanning process, it's only picked up 300 JPEGs. But just under 25 minutes later, when the scan is complete and video files have been repaired, ESUS has recovered 13,062 files. Interestingly, for a disk with a maximum of 64 gigabytes of space, the combined size of files recovered is over 77.41 gigabytes. Here's the breakdown of those files by type. For the JPEGs, there are a fair number of corrupted files, but that's to be expected, unfortunately, when you're scanning an SD card that hasn't been cleaned or reformatted for a long time. And there are also a lot of duplicated images that are small copies of larger originals. This is where the filters are so useful to filter out the corrupted and duplicated files that tend to be under 3 megabytes in size. So, for example, if you set the filter to only include files between 3 megabytes and 30 megabytes via the custom command, the number of images recovered is reduced from just over 12,000 images to just under 8,000 images. You can select those filtered files by clicking on this box and then recover them onto a different disk. There are various other criteria you can use for filtering the data, including file type, date modified, file size as we've seen, and an advanced filter. In terms of the Path tab and identifying named folders with photos, the recovery has done a good job, including recovering two lost partitions. You can see all the different named subfolders I created on the SD card, listed under Lost Paths. And you can drill down into each named folder, such as this one for a Pancolor 50 f1.8, to preview the photos taken by the lens, as well as any folders within that folder. This one I used to include images from the pan color that I wanted to post on Flickr. Although, as you can see, you may not be able to recover all the images in the folders. My experience with the software is it's not always possible to identify all the folders I created on the SD for my different lens photos, and it's not always possible to recover all the images. Folders can be missing, and photos can be corrupted beyond repair, including situations where older files have been overwritten by a more recent file. It looks to me that it's easier to find more recent named folders than older ones. And a big lesson learned here 
is not just to back up the folders on a separate disk, but also to do a full format of the SD card quite regularly. And then if that card fails for whatever reason, it's more practical and more possible to recover named folders, as we saw in the first demo. To summarize, here are the lessons and tips I've learned from using data recovery software. First of all, of course, back up your photos and videos and other documents on a consistent basis. This may sound obvious, but sometimes I've slipped or forgot to do new backups, especially with files on SD cards and external drives, and I've paid the price. Secondly, it's best to use a data recovery tool like EaseUs that will recover not just your photos and videos and other files, but also group these files under your original folder names. Otherwise, you'll end up with hundreds, if not thousands, of files recovered and dumped into one massive folder. EaseUs' data recovery software is very effective in many cases, and it's great that you can see what you can recover for free. But there are some important points to note, especially if you're trying to recover data from SD cards. It's good practice to reformat SD cards every so often, because the fewer erased and deleted old files you have on the card, the more chance there is to recover the recent files you really want to recover intact. In particular, if you try to recover data from an older, much-used card with loads of deleted files, you may find that some important files have been corrupted beyond repair or overwritten by other files. This may be more of an issue with SD cards than it is with larger hard drives because of the amount of activity taking place on the smaller storage size. It's important to remember that a quick format of SD cards will not totally erase your existing files. Indeed, as we've seen, you can sometimes recover all the files allegedly erased during a quick format on Windows software or on cameras, for example. So if you want to completely erase files you've already backed up, then it's important to do a full format. In conclusion, I found EaseUs very easy to use with a well set out control panel and useful features such as the filters, and critically, it works. Plus, you can try it for free to see if it'll do the job for your specific needs. If you're interested in learning more about EaseUs or buying a copy of the software, I've included a link in the description below. And watch out for discounts and savings as they pop up. You'll also see that the company offers a range of services and other tools to support data recovery and repair and backing up. I hope you found this video helpful. Any comments or observations are most welcome. And until the next time, all the best.